The next big sweet baby ink failure is upon us. Unknown 9 Awakening from Bandai Namco and Reflector Entertainment looks to be an absolute utter disaster based on its Steam rankings as well as a recent stream that they just did for the game. All of it looks like nightmare fuel for Kim Belair, David Bedard, and Sweet Baby Inc. And we are here for it. Before we get to this, I'd like to ask you, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos here at The Trent Report. Roll this up over at thatparkplace.com. And if we look at the Steam charts here using SteamDB, we can see that the game, which comes out tomorrow, October 17th, it currently sits in position number 794 on Steam's top sellers list and just number 349 on SteamDB's most wishlisted upcoming Steam games list. Absolutely not looking good for this game whatsoever. Does not look like there is any interest in it at all, at least on Steam. And then uh, we also can look at the uh, this recent Twitch stream and YouTube stream that they did for the game where they collaborated with former game and former writer Marcus Stewart, who streamed the game alongside creative director Christoph Rossignol. And we have some data here from Twitch Tracker regarding the stream uh, on Twitch. It only received a peak viewership of 387 and its average viewership was just 274. And they were streaming this to the official uh, Bandai Namco US uh, Twitch channel. So not looking good there whatsoever. Just to kind of give you a comparison point, they streamed Sparking or Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, uh, an early access video uh, just a week prior. And it uh, received a total of 85 or excuse me, 84,570 views. The Unknown 9 Awakening only received 8,900 uh, as we're recording here. And uh, the Dragon Ball Sparking Zero Early Access video stream did had an average viewership of 3,350 and hit a peak viewership of 4,323. So you can see did almost 4,000 more people in just its peak viewership uh, than Unknown 9 Awakening did and then just absolutely clobbered it when you're looking at average viewers. That's uh, just kind of shows the comparison. And we know Bandai Namco revealed that Dragon Ball Sparking Zero sold 3 million copies in just its first 24 hours on the market. If we look over on YouTube, the video performed marginally better based on total views. The stream currently has 9,210 views, but it already has an almost two to one negative ratio. It currently has 257 likes compared to 428 likes. I expect that uh, to kind of <laughs> increase. We shall see. Uh, this is the stream right here. If you want to watch that, you can. Uh, I'll have the link in the description below. And then uh, gamers were not just disliking the game, but they were also expressing their distaste in the comments too. Uh, one wrote this, uh, the devs didn't even try. What's the point of releasing this trash? Another posted, where are the demons and the chainsaws and the fireballs and the giant swords and all the cool stuff games are supposed to have? Another said, commendable that Bandai is trying to salvage this train wreck, but it's too late. Still another said, modern audience, you need to support this game so they can make more in the future. So uh, not looking good on all fronts here. Uh, looking at uh, Steam presale numbers, looking at the wish lists, looking at the stream data, and then looking just at kind of player feedback in the comments, all pointing to massive, massive negative reception and people just not purchasing this game whatsoever. In fact, we already have some sales data or at least rumor of sales data. This is from YouTuber Dr. Disaster. Uh, he shared this um, back, I don't know, I don't even remember when he shared this, but he shared this, uh, I feel like a couple of months ago and he shared it from his uh, inside source who is a person who runs nine retail stores in a highly populated area. And he says, and I'm being told that in all nine stores combined, there hasn't been a single pre-order for Unknown 9 Awakening. And I was recently contacted by someone else who works in the retail industry who claims to run 14 stores. I'm still vetting this person, but I will disclose this. I'm being told from this person that in those 14 stores, they also have not seen a single pre-order for Unknown 9 Awakening. So uh, zero pre-orders uh, at the retail outlets. So not looking good on that front either. And again, none of this is really surprising, right? Because this game is infected by Sweet Baby Inc. We know this because of this 
entry for the game that's listed on the Shorty Awards website, where it reveals that Sweet Baby and co-founders David Bedard and Kim Belair worked on the game. Bedard is credited as the brand content manager at Reflector Entertainment, while Belair is credited as story architect uh, at Sweet Baby Inc. You can see that right there on your screen. And then uh, we also have Bedard's LinkedIn page, uh, where he confirms he worked for Reflector Entertainment as a brand content manager from April 2018 to March 2019. So Reflector definitely infected with the Sweet Baby Inc., where they literally employed the guy uh, who runs Sweet Baby Inc. I mean, literally cannot make this stuff up. That is how infected this game is when the developer literally had the people who created Sweet Baby Inc. working on uh, the project. And given Sweet Baby Inc. works on the game, it was added to Caprutus Rambo's uh, Sweet Baby Inc. detected Steam Curatorless as well as the DEI detected website that Curatorless now boasts nearly 400 and 50,000 followers. That's 450,000 followers that are likely or that are unlikely to be purchasing uh, this game because uh, for all intents and purposes, the, the the list, especially the list that have Sweet Baby Ink games on it that are not recommended, does act as a boycott list as we have seen over the past year where games that have been on the list have been complete and utter financial disasters. We're looking at Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. We're looking at Concord, etc. Those are two of the biggest that have just been complete and total failures. Uh, we know Warner Brothers Discovery took a $200 million impairment charge on Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Concord literally shut down after being released uh, at less than two weeks after being released. So we also had these reports that they're uh, back in March that the game... I don't know whether it was Bandai or Reflector, whoever's running their forums, uh, decided to basically nuke the forums. We had this report from ex-user uh, DeSatro. And he said, in the Steam forums for this new upcoming game, they started mass banning everyone who mentioned Sweet Baby or said negative things about games being woke. It was a total purge. They wiped around 99% of the forum. Uh, so that was back in March. Uh, obviously, whoever's running their forums now uh, is allowing this stuff to kind of, of be on the forums because uh, I just took this screenshot here and you can see another LGBTQ plus plus game certified by Sweet Baby. Why female main character again? Ugly character. Do not buy this game. Send a message to Bandai Namco. Uh, this exists. I mean, you can see SBI game. So people clearly biggest flop of the year. Obviously, four concurrent players. This guy's asking how many concurrent players they will get on uh, Steam when it launches uh, tomorrow night. Uh, seeing how high, how high or how low it will go. Uh, placing bets on that. Uh, I'm I'm wondering if if Vegas does indeed do that because that would be interesting to to see if they begin to start placing bets on uh, these Sweet Baby Ink games and uh, what their uh, Steam concurrent. Uh, player count would be uh let me know what you guys think this the concurrent player count will be uh for this game i'm interested i i don't think that it's going to uh go over uh 400 i'd be really surprised if it does that um we'll see we'll see um but uh it, it might it might do that marginally but i don't know i just don't see this game doing really well let's see what that flintlock the siege of dawn game did i think that's kind of where this game might be at maybe a little bit lower. We'll see. Here we go. You can see peak all time for Flintlock. The Siege of Dawn was just 648. So I could see it maybe getting around there, maybe in the 500 levels for Unknown 9 Awakening. I would expect that Unknown 9 probably would do less. Uh, we'll see. I think that there might be uh, more animosity towards this game uh, as well. So uh, just because it... Kim Belair is the story architect and Sweet Baby Inc. is absolutely all over this game. But again, let me know what you guys think that that uh, peak concurrent is going to get to. And uh, get, let me know in the comments below. Remember to always be charitable, especially to each other, but to always speak the truth.